Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I've got another LED light review. This time the light was provided by a company called SG LEDs and as you can see they are a subsidiary or some type of a sister company to the Sansi brand. Uh, so I wanna, what I want to do is dig into this, pull it out, talk about it a little bit and then we'll compare it to uh, another one of the uh, Sansi lights that I have previously reviewed. So if you are interested in that, stick around, and we'll get right to it. So before I dig into this, I just wanted to make sure you knew that I have a whole playlist of uh, the different products that this company Sansi makes, and I'll go ahead and link it up in the cards up above, and also link the playlist down in the description below this video. But let's go ahead and dig into this now. Um, it's these are packed the, pretty much the same way that the, the Sansi products are packed, except for the box is white instead of cardboard colored. Um, let's dig in here. You kind of get the similar congratulations card. Got a user's manual here. And, uh, and then here is the product. So one thing you'll notice is that the it has the SG LEDs branding on it instead of the Sansi branding. The Sansi products are this really dark gray, almost black color, and the SG LED products are this light gray color. Also, the Sansi products has their name actually molded into the case of the products, where it appears that the SG LED has theirs printed on. Pull this out. First impressions here, let me zoom you out. This uh, is a very solid and heavy built unit, um, which seems to be a good thing. The, um, the bracket here, the mounting bracket, is made out of steel. It has some really nice um, locking screws on either side of the yoke. You need an Allen wrench to loosen and tighten them, but they are pre-tensioned to just give you just enough resistance to make it so you can, for example, you can set it up like this and it self supports it, you know, and you can change the angle. So, what is this? This is an out, what they call it is an outdoor LED floodlight and it is multicolored and it's programmable. So, you get a remote with it and you can use the remote to change the brightness and the the colors and you can also have it uh, cycle through various patterns and and um, strobe and fade effects and all these different things and you use it to um, what I would be using it for is to enhance some of my holiday decorations on the outside of my house um, it's not quite dark yet outside, but once it is, I'll take this out and shine it outside. But in the meantime, we're just going to do a little comparison with products that I have previously reviewed, as well as do a little bit of testing inside the shop. So here is the Sansi floodlight that I have previously reviewed. And here we'll note some differences. I added this clamp on here. I just, because I actually use this as a work light. Uh, you know, when I'm doing work inside the house and I have to have the power turned off, I'll run a an extension cord in and have this light hooked up because it's super bright. Um, but you notice that this, this one here has eight elements and this guy has 12 elements. The wattage on this guy is, this is a 50 watt light and on the SG LED offering it is 70 watts. Um, so, um, we, I should expect this light to be brighter than this light. The Sansi LED has these nice um, knobs on the sides to loosen uh, the adjust to loosen the frame, so you can make adjustment a little bit easier. And like I said before, this one you use Allen wrenches to do it, and it makes it a little bit sleeker, a little bit more compact looking. And this this light actually comes with. Interestingly enough, it comes with a sleeve anchor for mounting it in like the side, like in concrete, so you can mount it in your 
driveway, your sidewalk, or even in the mortar on your uh, bricks if you have a brick house. So this light is definitely intended to be used outside and the best feature that I think about this light, besides all the other things I've already mentioned, is that it's waterproof. IP66 waterproof. Um, so it can withstand anything that Mother Nature can throw at it. So um, this light weighs probably two to three times as much as this light. Um, this light is also waterproof, but this one is you can't even see, find any exposed wires or circuitry or anything. Um, like I said, it feels like it's really well made. So let's go ahead and I'll switch the camera angle and I will fire this guy up and we can cycle through some of the features that it has. Okay, I've got it hooked up to power. I put batteries in the remote. Batteries did not come with it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I've already made the mistake of looking at it when I turned it on. Um, and uh, so I'm not going to look at it when I do it this time. Alright, so it has on the remote, which you can't see because it's backlit now, there are some quick access buttons for certain colors. For example, you have your white, red, green, and blue. And then on top of that, you have different effects that you can apply to these colors. So here is a strobe light function. <clears throat> now, on the remote, you can also increase and decrease the strobe effect. So that's the slowest setting, and then I'll speed it up now and get it to its fastest setting. So it's not like a strobe light you see at the, uh, you know, at a at a club, but it's still a nice effect. Then we have this effect, which is called the flash effect, where it cycles through all the different colors. Then there's fade, where it cycles through the colors and fades out. And then this smooth fade, where it does basically the same thing, but, well, it smoothly transitions between all the different colors. On the remote, there are buttons that you can use to increase and decrease the brightness, and you can also increase and decrease how fast it fades through these colors. So I'll try to slow it down here, so it's slowly fading through the colors now. And then you speed it up, and it goes a lot quicker. All right, at the bottom of the remote, here, let me, okay, at the bottom of the remote, you have presets for all of the different colors that are offered. Um, so you have RGB at the top, but then down here you have all the different, you know, color, mix, mixed colors, I guess you could call it. So let's go ahead and cycle through them here. We got orange, coral, gold, Purple, pink, yellow, orchid, navy, indigo, which does not look like indigo to me, lime, aqua, and cyan. Okay, so I played around with it just for a little bit more, just to get more familiar with it. So when you're on a solid color, the up and down buttons on the remote control the brightness, so I can dim it. And it's only got like five different steps of brightness. So here's full brightness. There we go. Full brightness. One, two, three, four. Four steps. And now it's at its dimmest setting. And then um, that's very useful for the white um, light. I actually may end up using this as supplemental lighting for videos because I can control the brightness of this light. Um, and I might be able to put it in a soft box or something, something that would help me film video. Um, the light that, the white light that comes out of this is not as cold as the standard light that comes out of one of these uh, Sansi work lights. Um, and you want warm light when you're shining light on your face. Okay, so uh, that was done with the up and down arrows. Now when you're strobing, um, you can the, you increase and decrease the speed of the strobe using the left and right arrows. 
And so there I'm slowing it down now and, um, and speeding it back up. And the, you know the range of the remote has been really good. I'm not even pointing the remote at the unit and it's still picking up the signal. Same thing goes for all the different other effects. You can speed it up and slow it down using left and right on the remote. I'm going to go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison now with the Sansi work light and we'll try to I'm I'm going to lock the ISO and I'm going to lock the exposure on my camera and we will check them out side by side and see which one lights up my shop better. Okay, I have exposure and ISO locked on this camera. It's the ISO is at 400 and the exposure is just set to zero. We're going to take a look at these two beautiful Honda C70 Pass ports here. And in the middle, there's a little Boy Scout uh, soapbox derby project uh, that's kind of jammed in there. And I've got the two uh, light sources right off camera here to what would be my right. And I'm going to start with the Sansi LED floodlight. It is the 50 watt light that I reviewed over a year ago. Um, so I'm going to turn off the lights and, and plug this one in. Okay, so this is the Sansi 50 watt LED floodlight. You can see it's a very white light and gives you nice stark shadows behind your subject matter. And um, obviously it's not going to light up the whole room, but it does a pretty good job. Now I'm going to switch over to the SG LED outdoor LED floodlight. Okay, so that is the floodlight. That is the white setting at full brightness. So as you can see, even though this is a 70 watt floodlight, it actually puts out less light than the 50 watt Sansi floodlight. And there's a reason for that, and I'll explain it to you when I wrap up this video. Okay, so here they are side by side again. Here's the Sansi 50 watt floodlight, and here's the SGLED RGB outdoor 70 watt floodlight. And as you notice, the 50 watt light was a lot brighter than the 70 watt light. And I, the main reason I think the, that is, is because these LEDs only put out white light. These LEDs here put out red, green, and blue light, and it mixes all three of them together to make white. And so it is going to be a, a, a warmer white, as you could see in the example. Everything had like a pinkish hue to it, but as well, it's not going to be putting out as much light because you're actually sending power to three individual elements inside each um, light, I guess you could call it, whereas all of the power is going to one single element in each light bulb on, on these guys. Another thing we have to consider is that even though the total wattage of this one is higher than that one, if you do the math, um, like real quick I can do some math here, um, this is 70 watts divided by 12 elements and so that's 5.8 watts per element and on the Sansi product um, it's 50 watts divided by 8 elements and so you get 6 and a quarter watts per element on that one so that also is going to contribute to the brightness. Now having said that um, it's kind of comparing apples to oranges because all this is good for is putting out white light. This has a whole bunch of added features that I think give it added value and just the mere fact that I'm able to turn it on and off with a remote um, is really great as opposed to the only time this guy turns on is when you plug it in. There's no switch or anything it's just either on or it's off and that's based on whether it's plugged in or not. Um, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I think it's going to enhance my holiday decorations especially around Halloween and Christmas time. And I'm going to go outside and set this up on the dark side of my house and uh, we're, we'll go out and take a look and see um, how well 
it works as far as uh, shining a nice, you know, even color on one flat side of my house. Okay, here is the light in white at its brightest setting on the dark side of my house. I'm going to go ahead and walk up there and cycle it through a few of the colors and a few of the effects so you can see what it looks like. And here is the light set up as an accent light for the tree on the corner of my house. I really like this setup here because not only does it light up the tree right there, you know, but it also lights up a portion of the dark side of the house back here and also this whole section of the home. I think I may need more than one of these now. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video and this quick little uh, review of this SG LEDs outdoor LED floodlight. Um, if you are interested in buying one, I will put a link uh, to the product in the description below, and I will also give you in my description a coupon code that will get you 20% off of this product right here. I think they normally run about $70, so you uh, get a good, you know, you'll get like $14 off the price, which is, you know, pretty decent considering what it does. So I hope you all enjoyed the review and uh, stay tuned for more woodworking content. And thanks for watching. I'll, I'll see you guys next time.